My name is Masato Motomura from Tokyo Institute of Technology. I'm going to talk about air computing, the uh, promised plan for hardware. Okay. Uh, actually, I've just moved from Hokkaido University, so the uh, the works presented here is uh, that was done at the Hokkaido University. Okay, so uh, perhaps everybody knows that daily life is rapidly changing by uh, AI technologies. The age of AI, AI age, is characterized by the explosion of such uh, AI processing workloads. The term big data has been around for a long time, but now uh, we have to establish the uh, you know, efficient architectures for AI computing. So to uh, consider that subject, uh, let us consider uh, the compare, first of all, the uh, workload and computation efficiency, MFHPCs, and BRAIN. HPC stands for High Performance Computers. So if we compare uh, the uh, energy efficiency of between them, between them uh, on uh, goal games, uh, brain outperforms uh, quite a lot compared to HPC. But when we change the subject to the arithmetics, like uh, number crunching, uh, the situation changes completely. HPC outperforms human brain a lot. What we learn here is that brain outperforms uh, more than 10,000 times in intuitive without recognition kind of processing tasks. And HPC outperforms more than 100 million times in arithmetic, mathematical kind of processing tasks. Why is that? What happened? Why that happens? I believe uh, that that is, uh, you know, uh, defined by underlying hardware. HPC or computers are made up of numbers of arithmetic units that is very good at doing arithmetic tasks. And human brain is made up of biological neural networks. Uh, you know, exactly how it works, uh, we do not know yet. But it is good at uh, doing uh, game, uh, you know, uh, workloads like games. Each of them is very good at uh, you know, each task where uh, it can perform native processing and doing relatively, relatively bad uh, when it of when they are forced to do some kind of virtual processing. The key takeaway from here, uh, from this comparison, is that architectures define which is good at what. That means we need computers that reflect the nature of AI workloads. So when uh, we talk about the uh, uh, workloads, uh, let's take a look at deep neural networks, where the structure is a key. Uh, as you know, that DNNs are composed of neurons. Uh, each neuron is very simple. And those neurons are connected each other to form very large structure. Uh, that is deep neural network. Uh, you know, uh, neurons are connected to each other to form the layers and layers uh, of each a very, uh, very big structure. In other, in another words, DNN is represented by data flow graph that is very large scale graph uh, with simple nodes that are statically defined after the tr training is done and they are customized to each DNN instances. They are implicitly and embarrassingly parallel because there are lots of uh, neurons that can uh, work in parallel and uh, there is no virtual control flow, uh, no control operations, no conditions uh, are required. Uh, for uh, you know uh, conducting DNN workload, so essentially structure is a key. What does that mean? The implication of that is we are witnessing uh, the uh, shifts from sequence to structure. Uh, traditionally, uh, computers are designed in the sequence-oriented manner. In another words, uh, it, it is control flow processing based on von Neumann uh, processing architectures. That has been the royal road for computer design, uh, uh, where uh, you know se in, uh, sequence of instructions are fetched from memory to feed into the uh, arithmetic operation units. But now, uh, for the uh, artificial intelligence AI workloads, structure-oriented computing makes sense. That is more data flow processing oriented, with using reconfigurable hardware type uh, hardware structure. There, uh, we program basically a structure, uh, not the sequence in the uh, you know traditional way, and this uh, new uh, method is parallel in its nature. 
in straight, uh, in straight contrast to the uh, serial in nature traditional processing. Maybe we can uh, understand this way. This is the kind of right brain uh, that is uh, augmenting the uh, use for the left brain, traditional uh, com computers for uh, the AI workloads. Okay, uh, in this understanding or observation in mind, our group has been working on reconfigurable DNA accelerator architectures for, uh, during the uh, past years. Uh, first example is binary ternary DNA accelerator, uh, which we presented at the Symposium of Wireless Circuits 2017s. Uh, the next one is low quantized DNA accelerator with 3D SRAM, uh, presented at the ISSC last year. And the third one is Deezer NN. Accurate neural network for low bit precision hardware presented at Field, Pro uh, field Programmable Technology uh, 2018. And the last one is Dynamically Reconfigurable Processor with AI Mac Engine presented at the Symposium on VLSS Circuits last year from Renesis. By the way, this presentation basically were done at the uh, and published from Hokkaido University uh, when, uh, when I was there. Okay, yeah, the first example is a brain memory, a binary, reconfigurable, and in-memory processing uh, engine. Uh, this is in-memory uh, in the sense that uh, it stores all the synapses, weights, and neural activations on chip SRAM, and it requires no external memory access. And it is also massively parallel with using two types of X, NOR, and SAM operation units. And it is also reconfigurable can house any binary ternary DNN under its maximum capacity. This is a photo diagram and a, photo, uh, a chip photo of the uh, brain memory. And here you can see lots of the uh, chip area is uh, consists of the just memory. So it looks like memory, but it can still do the uh, binary uh, ternary reconfigurable processing of the DNN tasks. More information is available in the JSSC uh, 2018 April issue, so maybe you can check it out. The next example is Quest, a uh, quantized engine die stacked with SRAM. If we compare this work from, uh, with the brain memory, the previous one, uh, we try to achieve higher uh, prediction accuracy by using local quantization uh, extending a little bit from the uh, binary ternary uh, quantization and it's all, it also tries to uh, achieve higher flexibility by uh, uh, introducing MIMD type uh, parallel processing engine. For handling modern DNNs uh, which features a large and complex network structure, uh, we need large and high bandwidth short latency memory. Uh, we achieve this by uh, utilizing die stacking technology with SRAMs. As for the die stacking, uh, this is the joint work with KO University where most of the uh, stacking uh, uh, was done using through chip interface technology. And this is a die photo of the Quest chip uh, that is uh, stacked with the uh, eight SRAM dies with uh, the through chip interface that I mentioned. More information is available in the JSSC uh, 12, 19th January issue, so maybe uh, you can find out. The last example I introduce here is dynamically reconfigurable accelerator for embedded AI. Uh, this, this work is uh, jointly done with Renesas and myself. Um, here in this diagram, uh, uh, Renesas, uh, ex it explains the Renesas st strategy for microcontroller market. They uh, coined the term embedded AI, EAI, for this market, where real-time response, communication cost, and security of the uh, private data is very much important. They are trying to, uh, to target this market with the, uh, their uh, technology, so-called DLP, Dynamically Reconfigured Processor. Uh, you know, they have been working on this technology for a long time, with, in, in addition to the AI Mac engine that can handle the uh, Mac operations of DNNs. So this is the hybrid solution for this uh, important microcontrol market. And, and uh, they are trying to uh, productize this technology in any time soon. Okay, so we are witnessing the era of intelligence at the edge. 
Uh, DNS, as we know today, is just a surface of what's happening right now. So it's a, it, it, it's a truly the uh, tip of the iceberg. And we are seeing the shift from cloud to edge also. And uh, DNS at the edge, or even in the cloud, is the, the feature by uh, common, common key aspects like mostly static workload and data flow glitch, and maybe uh, in the soon time uh, they will be self evolvable uh, nature. They will have the self evolvable nature. Um, structure oriented computing is the way to go, I believe. Uh, there, are, there may be several choices like uh, utilizing ex existing recomputable hardware like, you know, like FPGA or trying to establish virtualized reconfigurable hardware like in the Renzo's case and our own works and static data for oriented machines. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.